Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. Let us start our service this morning. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful day, Father, that you have given us, Father Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I just pray, Father, that as we worship before you, Lord, as we hear your word this morning, I pray that you will just bless us, Lord Father. Touch us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just, just cleanse us, Lord Father God. Hallelujah. Lord, we surrender this time into your hand, Father. We just bless us, Lord, as we worship you. Exalt your name, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us worship the Lord. Amen. Let us invite Brother Shama to, to lead us in worship this morning. Let us uh, ready to pray and worship for the Lord. Yeah. Today, morning, Sunday service. Let's go. Let's go.
your wisdom Jesus hallelujah just fill this place father God with your presence and bless us Lord bless your name father hallelujah in Jesus mighty name we ask and we pray amen amen, amen church amen. hallelujah amen. it is so great to be in the presence of the Lord amen amen hallelujah now before we go into the Word of God uh, let us prepare to give unto the Lord this morning yeah prepare your offerings okay prepare because we are uh, virtually live right now you can prepare your phone you can type in the bank account number I mean it is you know we have I mean you know I'm sorry to be honest but we have no excuse now to not give unto the Lord amen, amen. We, uh, we have all the access we have all the technologies right now to give unto the Lord so I believe that there is no excuse for us Amen. to not give unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. Because church, when we give, God will bless us back. Amen? Amen. The more you give, on, the Richard. more God will bless you. Amen? <laughs> it is said into the, in the word of God that you need to give to him because yes. the life that you have right now on, is Lord. from him. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> so on fire about giving, yeah. but uh, I'm not here to preach today. I just want to encourage us to preach because... It's true, church, that we have no excuse right now yes. to not give unto the Lord. Amen. Bless Amen. the work of God. Bless the church of God. And God will prosper you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us pray Amen. for the offering. Hallelujah. Father God, we just want to bless your name, Jesus. We just want to thank you, Lord, for all the blessings and the goodness in our life that you have given us, Father God. I pray that you will just bless our giving, Father God. Uh, double fold, triple fold, and hundred fold, Lord yeah. Father, as we give, as we bless your church, yeah. as we believe, bless your ministry, Father, hallelujah. We believe, Father God, in your miracle. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask you to pray. Amen? Amen. 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 Our usher yeah. here is so hardworking. She can, 
she has gone around uh, collecting the offering <laughs> way before the prayer ended. Hallelujah. God bless you, church. God bless you in your giving. God bless you in your faith in God. Amen. Are you ready for the word of God this morning? Amen. I am. I am. And I hope that you are too. So let's welcome Pastor Carlo for the service. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can shout hallelujah there wherever you are in Jesus' name. So today we want to go to the word and we will have another round of this uh, Holy Spirit uh, uh, season. All right, praise God. Today I'll be speaking about activating the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. So wherever you are, I want you to get ready your Bible today and open your ears, open your heart to receive the word of the Lord. Praise Amen. God. I want to continue with the uh, passion and uh, the, the, the pitch where she kind of started, right? We are here. So sometimes in the spirit, you need to ride in the anointing you need to learn how to tap into it you know you can feel the the atmosphere so you need to tap into it you need to ride upon it don't don't bring it down don't bring it down you need to just go up yeah just go up and and flow into it and let it bring you so today i feel that passion all right maybe she cannot have not preached for quite some time so she longed for that maybe one of these days we put her to Bring the word of God here. Uh, yeah. Amen and amen. Praise God. Well, I do not know. We are still doing this uh, worship service and uh, delivering to you the word of God every Sunday from our home. So we broadcast live here from Facebook and uh, also we will uh, upload this for, uh, in the YouTube and you can hear the word of God. So I do not know whether we can open the church. We are waiting for the new SOP. But anyway, uh, we, are, we have learned to be familiar with uh, meetings online, Zoom meeting, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, some people are using that. But we are here every Sunday to bring you the Word. Uh, we are encouraging you every week to get the Word, get hold of the Word of God, even just once a week from your church, from your leader especially, from your pastor, from the spiritual father in the house of God your leaders, your shepherd, that is very, very important. Again, I want to remind you, it is, it is not wrong to go into YouTube teaching and all of that because I do that too. For studying, for references, you know, studying the Word of God, I do that. But you need to get the Word from your family, from your the father of the house, from your shepherd, from your leader. And I think that is very important. And I think that is a priority for every church member. Right? In the church, we have our pastor. In the church, we have our shepherd who prepare the word of God. We are seeking God every week, you know, throughout the week. I do not know for some pastors, but I'm preparing my message uh, throughout the week. Of course, sometimes I'm, I'm quite late to, to put it in, in words and the outlines, typing, typing it out. You know, and then sending it to my iPad. But I've been preaching from Monday, and you know, even today after church service, I begin to, you know, search my heart and uh, feel what the Lord wants to uh, speak for the next Sunday. So I'm picking up things here and there in my prayer, in my heart, as I walk daily, as I do my house chore and all of that. So I'm I'm, I'm listening to God in my heart and waiting on the Lord what to preach every Sunday. Okay, so we are preparing this spiritual meal, uh, spiritual foods for the church member. Uh, that is the sacrifice uh, for your pastors. You know, they are doing that every week. You know, uh, we, we come from a small church. And uh, on top of that, we are a small church. Not every church member also come and attend our Facebook and join our online meeting. But there are many people who are listening and watching uh, the services and the word and getting blessed you know people who are not from our church but they are getting blessed by the word of God how, how I wish that members will log in every week members will get the word of God every week because this is what we prepare throughout the week seeking the heart of God seeking the mind of God and praying what God will speak and deposit into your life and into your heart hallelujah Hallelujah. Sometimes we prepare a special meal for our family. 
Sometimes they do not appreciate it. They do not appreciate, you know, but other people get blessed. So I want to encourage, uh, especially members, especially our friends and families, those who are close to us, get the Word of God. I, I'm not saying I'm a great preacher. I'm not saying I'm a prophet that everybody needs to listen to me. But we have uh, members in the church that need to listen to the Word of God. Who knows that God speaks to you through the Word that is being delivered here every week. Wonderful. I have a friend from Nepal and I get excited when he listened to my preaching about two, three weeks ago. And now he's asking me to teach in his Bible school uh, through Zoom meeting. So tomorrow night I'll be speaking for his students uh, for, uh, in Nepal. How I wish that I can be there. But because of the situation today, but the Word of God cannot be bound. I still can share. I still can speak to the people in Nepal through Zoom meeting. So praise God. I am happy. I'm glad that the word that being preached and delivered here every Sunday is touching lives. Uh, not only here locally, but also touching lives uh, internationally and in other countries also. And I pray that this word of God will speak to people in the situation. Whoever they may be, wherever they may be, I pray that the word of God will speak to you personally and that God will visit you in your life. That God will visit you in your situation it will bring miracles it will bring answered prayers it will bring breakthrough and restoration and healing in your life because the word of god the bible says is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword hallelujah that's the word of god that's the word of god so today i'm still in the season of the spirit of god I know that the Spirit of God will be with us forever, but I just feel that this season is the season of the Spirit. We are talking about the Spirit. And, you know, what an encouragement. I was listening to the preaching of our friend in the U.S., you know. Uh, they came here before uh, in the church. So last Sunday after I, I preached and their service was on, so I just stood on uh, for a while listening to his preaching. And he also was preaching about the power of the Holy Spirit. And many people are talking about the Holy Spirit today. Many preachers are, are preaching about the Holy Spirit today. You know how important it is to get to know the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit work in our life. I think this is the time that we need the Holy Spirit more than ever. We need this helper, not only a comforter. But that is what the Bible says that Jesus said, I will send you another comforter. Another Bible translation says helper, which is more correct one. Because the Holy Spirit indeed is our helper. He helps us in everything in our life. That is the Holy Spirit. And I want to encourage Christians because many Christians miss these things. They believe in God the Father. They believe in Jesus. They do believe in the Holy Spirit. But they do not, they do not, you know, uh, live it out. They do not practice the presence of the Holy Spirit. They do not practice, you know, the, the working of the Holy Spirit in their life. Well, they can argue many things about the Holy Spirit. They can argue many things about the working of the Holy Spirit, about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but it is not working in their life. I was just sharing this last Friday about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I know that there are many, many views, many interpretation, many understanding, and everybody is preaching about it. Everybody is trying to impose whatever they believe regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I come to a realization and conclusion that we can argue or anybody can argue about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which one is the correct argument. But to me, what I am concerned the most is I want to see the working and the result of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in your life. Well, if you do not believe baptism of the Holy Spirit, because some people teach us that there is no term of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. Well, okay, we chuck it aside. No baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I believe in the infilling of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And that is what I mean about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
when we say baptism of the Holy Spirit, even though we do not have the exact term of that in the New Testament, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit speaks about the empowering. The baptism of the Holy Spirit speaks about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. The power from on high coming upon us. The Holy Spirit descending upon us like He descended on the day of Pentecost. And He empowered those early church members, early disciples. And empowered them that they went throughout the world and preaching the gospel. And they turned the world upside down. Hallelujah. And this is what we want to see in our life. Not so much in the arguments, uh, which one is the correct understanding about it. But I want to see the result. I want to see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in my life or in your life. Whether we will see a transformation, we will see a reformation happen in your life. And we see the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit bringing spiritual growth bringing breakthrough, bringing miracles, uh, and bringing the anointing for your service unto God. This is what we want to see, and this is what the world needs to see, and this is what the church needs to have today, especially in this day. Hallelujah. You need to pray and say, I welcome you, Holy Spirit, in my life. I welcome your power, I welcome the anointing, I welcome the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in my life. I want to see the movement of the Spirit of God. I want to see the wind of the Spirit of God blowing into my life, blowing into my situation. I want to see the empowering of the Holy Spirit in my life in preaching the gospel, in preaching the kingdom of God, in praying for the sick, and laying on of hands on the sick. I want to see the Spirit of God and His power work through my life and touching those people in my surroundings say hallelujah yeah. come on say praise yeah. the lord praise the lord praise the lord. the lord ah hallelujah we give praise to the holy spirit we give honor to the holy spirit we give worship to the holy spirit when was the last time that you said holy spirit i honor you holy spirit i worship you holy spirit i need you holy spirit i praise you some people they cannot say that they're so afraid that they worship the Holy Spirit, not worshiping Jesus. No, God is a triune God. You worship the Father, you worship the Son, and you worship the Holy Spirit. You give honor to the Father, you give honor to the Son, and you give honor to the Holy Spirit. Because God the Father is holy. God the Son is holy. God the Holy Spirit is holy. They are one God, one person, but three different personalities he is our God and we need him in our life it is the Holy Spirit that leads us to Jesus let me share this as a recap what I've been sharing for this past few weeks six essential reasons why I need to know the Holy Spirit I shared this before but let these things serve as a recap uh, to refresh your memory hallelujah hallelujah here in uh, uh, number one, six essential, why I need to know the Holy Spirit. Number one, because the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is not some force, it's not some you know, power that emanates from the Father, but the Holy Spirit is a person. I, I spoke about this, even on Friday, we teach about uh, the Holy Spirit, and we have covered about the personality of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. We can have communion with Him. The Holy Spirit communicates and He has feelings. He can intercede for us and pray for us. We have read these verses before. Acts 13.2, Romans 15.30, speak about the love of the Spirit. Hebrews 10.29, talk about, you know, despising the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 4.30, talk about the grieving of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Romans 8, verse 26, 27, talk about the Holy Spirit praying for you. The Holy Spirit intercedes for you through groaning and all. Number two, the Holy Spirit always been here and He will always will be. 
somebody speak to me and ask me question about tongues uh, from the Philippines recently well it's a good argument but I told him I said brother this argument I have heard about this argument for many many years and many many times is the same argument but I have my own stand I have my own conviction regarding tongues I do believe that tongues is the gift of the Holy Spirit and it's still in operation today one of the reason why I say that to him one of the reason why I believe tongues is the gift of the Holy Spirit not only because it is written in 1st Corinthians 12 but also I believe as long as the Holy Spirit still here in the world the gifts of the Holy Spirit still will be available and still will be working today including the gift of tongues Amen. hallelujah how can you say I believe in the Holy Spirit I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit yet you say I don't believe these certain gifts I don't believe tongues I don't believe miracles I don't believe faith I don't believe wisdom and all of that no the Holy Spirit give these nine gifts of the Holy Spirit to the church if you are a believer of Jesus Christ these nine gifts are available to you if you hungry for it if you pray for it and if you want God to use you that's one of the reason you cannot separate this the gifts of the Holy Spirit you cannot say I don't need this I need some of this no you need to receive the fullness of the gifts of the Holy Spirit as you receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life the Bible says Jesus received the fullness of the Holy Spirit without measure. He was filled and He was full of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit always will be here and He will always be as He has been. In Genesis 1-2 the Bible says that the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. That's Genesis in the beginning the Holy Spirit has been working and at the end of the Bible Revelation 27 17 the Holy Spirit also was there he said the bride the spirit and the bride say Maranatha come Lord Jesus so from the opening of the scripture in Genesis to the closing of the book of Revelation the Holy Spirit was there so he has been and he will always be in our time so i believe the holy spirit is here that's why we need to know him we need we need to know him i i, I do know the holy spirit and i do experience uh, the holy spirit in my life some of the some of it is quite you know a uh, mighty experience and uh, I, I i never forget what the holy spirit works through my life but i still knew i knew that they are more in the Holy Spirit that we need to experience there are more things that we need to explore and we need to tap into the Holy Spirit there are more we just need to pay the price we just need to hunger for it and to crave for it in our life we need to see miracles like we have never seen before we need to experience that revival again like it happened in the Wells revival like it happened you know those revival in the interior revival that happened in Pensacola revival that happened in Korea you know we need to experience those things today because the Holy Spirit still here with us today why I need to know the Holy Spirit number three because the Holy Spirit brings transformation in our life it is hard to change it is hard to change I did experience that when I was growing up I did have some problems in my life personally you know and I tried to overcome it I turned here and there and everywhere and I cannot find solution I want to change I want to change but I couldn't change until the day that I met the Lord until the day that I repented and received the Lord and the day when I was filled with the Holy Spirit they lay hands on me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit not so much that I receive in tongues I told the church last Friday that I received the gift of tongues by faith 
I did not receive the gift of tongues by, you know, baptism that it, it, it takes over my tongue uncontrollably. But I receive it by faith. I begin to speak those words, those, those strange words that I have in my mind and in my lips. I begin to speak it forth by faith until it accumulated in my life. Until today. I just receive it by faith and I exercise it by faith. But what happened in my life? When they lay hands on me and I received the Holy Spirit by faith, I saw a great transformation in my life. I saw a great transformation. I became a changed person. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. If you have problem in your life, come to the Holy Spirit. If your husband have a problem, encourage your husband and lead him to a prayer meeting. Lead him to a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit. And pray that God will touch his heart and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because that will transform his life. If your wife has a problem, bring her to a meeting where the Spirit of God is being poured out. And I believe that she will experience transformation. If your children have problems, encourage them and bring them to church where the Spirit of God is being preached and the Spirit of God is being poured forth and your children will experience transformation. The Holy Spirit help to bring transformation in our life. Hallelujah. Number four, the Holy Spirit help us to be filled and to be equipped. Without the, there, there, there are many Christians today who does not have the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Many Christians today, they are not filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I believe they will go to heaven because they believe in Jesus Christ, because their faith saved them. Your faith in Christ will save you. But living in this world with the Holy Spirit, with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, you will have an extra equipment. You will have a weapon in your life. You will have a divine ability in your life to be able to walk in God's will and to fulfill God's will and God's word in your life. So the Holy Spirit fills us and He equips us. Number five, why I need to know the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit will cause me to be led. A life that is led by the Spirit of God. And my life will be productive and fruitful. Fruitfulness and productiveness is caused by the Holy Spirit. A Christian who is filled with the Holy Spirit is more productive and more fruitful in their life. Whether fruitful in the fruit of the Holy Spirit or fruitful in their works of the ministry or fruitful in their characters and glorifying God in their life. Come on, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Number six, it is about a daily lifestyle when you have the Holy Spirit. It's a lifestyle, an encounter with the Holy Spirit. So my life today as when I receive Jesus, I walk in the new life with Christ Jesus in my life. It's the same when I receive the Holy Spirit. My life now, I live by the dictate of the Holy Spirit. I live by the leading of the Holy Spirit in my life. And that will cause me to live in victory. That will cause me to live in power. To, to have a, a spiritual strength in my life. To live my Christian life. Hallelujah. These are uh, six essential things. Why we need to know the Holy Spirit in our life. Praise God. I want to share seven reasons to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we need His help. <clears throat> Why we need to be filled? Because we need His revelation. There are things in our life or times or season in our life, in our walk, every day. We need His revelation. There are things need to be revealed to us. And that, that's why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Because we need His wisdom. We need the wisdom of God. We need the wisdom of God. Wisdom in choosing life. Wisdom in choosing the ways. Uh, where can, uh, do we need to take uh, a way of life? We need God's wisdom to do business. We need God's wisdom to raise our family. We need His wisdom. And the Holy Spirit help us to have wisdom. Why we need to be filled with the Spirit? Because we need the fruit of the Holy Spirit. 
Fruit is not produced by disciplining your life. I discipline my life to love. I discipline my life to have self-control. I discipline. Yes, I do believe in discipline. But when the Holy Spirit fills you, He will produce these fruits in your life. The nine fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, self-control, and all of that. He will produce it in your life. That is kind of supernatural. Supernatural. Wow. Like what happened to Paul the Apostle when he was filled with the Holy Spirit and encountered the Lord <coughs> in the road of Damascus. That transformed his life from, from a murderer, from a persecutor of the church to become a mighty man of God who is full of love like a father to the church. He mothered them. He nurtured the church. He was full of love. He was uh, you know, weeping for the church. He was crying for the church. That is Paul the Apostle. Like Peter, the apostle, a man who, you know, talks before he thinks. <laughs> a man who always had to say something, but the Lord changed him. He was a coward, but he became a great preacher and an evangelist. Oh, hallelujah. The Spirit of God will produce fruit. The Spirit of God will produce purity. Purity. Many people, they are struggling to be pure. But when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, purity will come. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, power will come. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the presence of God will come. The presence of God. I remember a young people, a young uh, people came to my house, brother and sister, because they want to ask something. So they came down. So they went into my house when I was in Saba. They, you know, the sister came into my house and she sat in the living room. But the brother came in and sat down there and he was very quiet all the time. Only then when they left, the sister told me, he said, my brother, when he entered your house, pastor, he felt this kind of awe. You know, he felt, he felt the presence of God was so strong in your house and, you know, caused him to be uh, almost like dumbfounded. He just sat down there and never opened his mouth. So when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the presence of God will come. Hallelujah. I hope even me just sharing this, uh, uh, this little bit of things will, will make you to be hungry, will make you to desire the Holy Spirit in your life. It is a wonderful experience. It will be a wonderful journey. Since I was filled with the Holy Spirit many, many years ago until today. In our ministry, we experience a lot of uh, we suffer. We, we, we were in hard times and hardship in the ministry, but it never was boring in the ministry. I was always excited in the ministry. Even though we, we went through situations in our life, you know, we experienced some, some situation in life. We don't have enough food. We don't have enough money. We don't have enough provision and all of that. You know, we struggle in building the church and all. We have to pray everything in, you know, to have things in our life. But ministry was not boring for me because the Holy Spirit is there. It was a wonderful journey of life with the Holy Spirit. You see Him working. There was time in Sabah before, every time I preach on Sunday afternoon, we have our church on the Sunday afternoon about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And after the service over, we see the Holy Spirit working and moving and touching people. While I was driving the van and sending people and going back home from the church, I could feel the Holy Spirit was having this joy and I could almost see the Lord smiling to see people are being touched by the Spirit of God. So going back from that church and going back to my home, even I had to send people around, you know, travel here and there. My heart is bubbling with joy to see God and His Holy Spirit work in the church. What a wonderful journey. What a wonderful time. Your life will be filled with satisfaction. The emptiness and all the vacuums that is in your heart will be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come on, shout hallelujah. Ah, yeah. uh, Jesus, wonderful. We give praise to Jesus who gave us the Holy Spirit. 
We give praise to Jesus who baptized us with the Holy Spirit. We give praise to Jesus who will fill the church with the Holy Spirit. We give praise to Jesus who let the Spirit of God come and fill our hearts and change us and transform us and bring us up. Hallelujah. And let us to live above this natural plane and realm to live in the realm of the Spirit of God. What a wonderful, wonderful life. Be hungry for Him. You need to desire Him in your life. You need to cry out and pray, God, I need you. I need your Spirit. Fill me. It is a promise for me. You said that the promise of the Spirit is for you and for all your children and to the generation that will come. He promised in Joel chapter 2 from verse 28, He said, God will pour out His Spirit on the last days, on all flesh, on all people. God will fill us with the Holy Spirit. It is a promise for you and I. And this is what we need to know today. This is what we need to have today so that your Christian life will not only be filled with tradition. Do you know that tradition, Christianity, brings spiritual death into your life? Maybe you can be in church, you grow old in the church, and you die in the church, but you live a dead Christian life. But when you live with the Holy Spirit, He brings alive everything that you touch. When you have the Holy Spirit, He brings alive everything that you do for God. Your worship will become alive. Your prayer will become alive. Your family will become alive. Your relationship will become alive. Your reading of the Word will become alive. Your time with God will become alive. And your Christianity will not be monotonous but your Christianity will be filled with life. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. My Jesus. How to activate the person and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. Again, I want to share some points here which will help you. Number one, you need to make room for more. Make room for more. Don't be sorry. This is what tradition will do. Tradition said, stay here. Only here. This is where you were born and this is where you need to die. This is your tradition. Don't violate the tradition. You can violate the word of God, but don't violate tradition. That is what tradition will say. That is a dead church. That is a dead tradition. But if you want to know the Spirit of God, you need to experience more from Him and you want to see Him activated in all His manifestation and activity in your life, you need to make room for more. It's nothing wrong to listen to some preachers from other churches, the anointed ones, the Spirit-filled ones. I enjoy listening to Renhard Bonke. Wow, when he preaches, I'm not only listening to his preaching, but when he preaches, I want to catch something from his preaching. I want to catch his passion. I want to catch his anointing. I want to say, Lord, I want that. What is in his life? I want that anointing. I want that spirit from his life. I love to watch these people, Benny Hinn, Morris Rollo. I, I, I enjoy watching these people before. Even until today, I still enjoying their videos. Sometimes I need to be fired up. Sometimes I just put on the YouTube and search them and search their teaching and preaching on YouTube to make me fire up for the Lord. You need to make room for more. The Holy Spirit, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he rubs on you. He rubs on you. So you need to make room for more. Make yourself to be robbed more of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes like we have wind in our stomach, in our body. We, need, we want to rub some of this ointment, especially those uh, ointment that hit the, you know, hit the ointment. You feel good when it is rubbed on your back. On your tummy, you feel good. When it is rubbed on your skin, on your muscle, those parts that need uh, this ointment, you feel good. And you said, rub more, rub more. The more you rub it, the more it feels good. Wow! 
<laughs> the Holy Spirit is like this ointment. In the Greek word, the word anointed is krio. Krio means to rub on, smear on you, rub on you. So get the Holy Spirit to be rubbing you more through prayer, through worship, through fellowship, through the Word. Stay there and let the Spirit of God rub His anointing on you more and more. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me in Luke 4, 18 because He has anointed me. He has rubbed on me. He has smeared on me. You know, the warriors, when they go to battle in the olden days, they carry swords, spears, and this shield. So usually the shield, they have this shield on their hand to protect them from the arrows, to protect them from the sword. They can deflect the sword, they can deflect the spears from the enemy. But these shields, they, they not only carry and keep that waiting for the battle to come, but while waiting for the battle or from attacks of the enemy, the shield, to protect the shield, they need to rub oil on it. They need to rub oil on it regularly to keep and to preserve the shield. And also it helps them to deflect the swords of the enemy when they protect themselves, when the enemy try to smite them and they cover themselves and protect. So it will deflect the sword of the enemy. That is what the anointing will do. When it is rubbed on you more and more because you are making more room for the Spirit of God to be rubbed on you. When the enemy comes and bring his attacks in your life, you can deflect and you can protect yourself from the attack of the enemy. I'm going to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why it's so important to pray. To spend time with God, spending time in the presence of God with His Word, so that the Spirit of God will be rubbed on you, my Jesus. I'm so passionate today. Just need to spend time with the Lord. I want to encourage those pastors. I want to speak to you. Many pastors today become discouraged because they cannot preach in front of many people in their congregation because the church cannot be open. And many pastors speak in front of the camera like what I'm doing today. Sometimes you need to preach without people there because you're preaching in your room. So there is a difference in preaching to a crowd and preaching before a camera. Sometimes you don't feel that passion and you don't feel that courage or encouragement to preach but you know, when the Spirit of God on you, when the Spirit of God, the anointing rub on you, whether you preach in the camera or you preach to nobody, you still be preaching with fire. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Many pastors today, they are discouraged because they have no congregation to preach to. Some pastors, their churches had to be closed down. Some churches had to be closed temporarily. And meetings all will be online. But I want to encourage you, make room for more of the Spirit of God. Be robbed of the anointing of God in your life. Spend time in prayer. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. I think today you have more time to spend with God because this lockdown and MCO, limited of movement and all. Stay in your house and stay in the presence of God. Be anointed. Be prepared like like this John the Baptist in the desert before he is revealing to the people he was in the desert, Jesus was in the desert, Moses was in the desert, they were in the desert, be prepared. The anointing was rubbed on them to so the time when they were manifested, they appeared before the people, the power of God worked in their life mightily and powerfully. Come on, hallelujah. Take courage, take courage all the pastors, take courage in the Lord. Make room for more. Number two, you need to bring associations in your life. Other people, other pastors, especially the spirit field. Don't bring all those people in your life 
spend time, go to them, look for them, drink coffee with them at the restaurant, and when you sit at the table, everything they speak to you about gossip, everything they speak to you about problem, oh my problem, oh this person, oh that person, I don't like this pastor, I don't like that pastor, I don't like this person, I don't like, every time, until your coffee finish, you order another one, and continue all the gossiping. That will drain you out of your anointing. You need to bring association in your life that will encourage you. Even if you cannot pray together or worship together, but there will be a word of faith spoken into your life. There will be an encouragement spoken into your life. You edify one another. The anointing upon the person, the anointing upon you, you will be rubbing each other with the anointing. Hallelujah. You will be encouraged. Look for leaders that is anointed. Look for pastors that move in the gifts and the power of the Holy Spirit. Be connected with them. And you also will be filled with the gifting that you have. <laughs> Hallelujah. If I'm, I'm not mistaken, there was uh, a miracle crusade. I think it was in Myanmar or in Thailand. Many, many years ago. And they built this big stage, this platform on the field. And people were gathered, thousands of people gathered in that crusade. And the servant of God preached on that platform. But underneath was empty space, right? Because they raised the stage. There is this young boy, poor young boy. Because he don't enter into the crowd. He went underneath this platform and he was sleeping there while listening, sleeping there, listening to this preacher preach. For that whole, I don't know how many weeks was the crusade, but it lasted more than one day. I think it's about three weeks. But he was there every day when the crusade was on, when this man of God preached, thousand people got saved. This boy was underneath that platform. He was sitting there, even he fell asleep in that platform. The preacher that preached that message was Billy Graham. And this young boy was there underneath the stage. You know, after many years, this young boy grew up. He received unknowingly, he received the importation of the anointing of the preacher preaching up there up on the stage. And this boy was underneath the platform. The anointing rubbed on him. After many years, when this young boy grew up, he became a great preacher like that man. Come on, hallelujah. It is important to sit at the presence of your leaders, at the presence of the anointed leaders and preachers. It's very important to sit under their ministry so that you will receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit. If you read the story of Benny Hinn when he was young, his friend brought him to Catherine Kuhlman's meeting and they stand at the door for many hours before the door of the church was opened. When it was open, they ran in front of the church and they sit right in front of the church. And Benny Hinn was sitting down there and listening to this woman of God preachers. But that day, the Lord led this woman, Catherine Kuhlman, to speak into his life. And from there, he received the impartation of the anointing. That is Benny Hinn. It's very important to associate yourself with anointed men and woman of God. Not with those men who like to argue and talk about another man's problem, but men who will speak about God. Men who will explain to you about God. I read about the, the story of Lester Samro when he was with Smith Wigglesworth. He was in his 20s. Smith Wigglesworth uh, was on his 80s during that time. They became friends. And he can go to his house and have fellowship with this man. And every time they were on the table having breakfast or meal, you know, Smith Wigglesworth will read to him the Bible, will explain to him. And then they will have meal and read the Bible to him again, fellowship, pray together. Lest the Samra receive the anointing from his life. It's the same thing with Reinhard Bonnke, with George Jeffrey before he died. Reinhard Bonnke went into his house after his Bible school just that day, just that day. He dropped by in the house of this man of God 
And this man of God prayed for him. When he left, he arrived his home. The father fetched him from the uh, train station. And then his father told him, he said, I have bad news for you. The man of God has died. He said, hey, I just met him yesterday. There was a time he received the anointing. It's very important to bring association of other gifted men and anointed men of God and women of God in your life. Don't waste your life with people who always wants to gossip and talk about another man's problem. But be with men and women that will rub on you the anointing and faith and the word of God in your life. Come on, say amen. 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 Again, number four, you need the anointing. Uh, express it. You have to live it out. You have to release it. You have to express it. How? By faith. Just by faith. You don't have to see by feeling. Just by faith. When Elijah told his servant, he said, go out there and see whether the rain has come. And he came back and said, Master, there's no, no rain, no cloud. You know, very dry. The sun was so clear. No cloud. He said, go again and see. And Elijah was praying. And he said, go again. Seven times he went. He said nothing. But the seventh time he said, there is a cloud like a, you know, the size of a man's hand. A man's face. And Elijah said, tell Ahab, go home. Because there is a great rain coming. Just a small cloud, Elijah said, a great rain coming. That's faith. You need to release it by faith. That's how you activate the person and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to build yourself with the Word of God. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You need to read the Bible. Read the Bible. It's good to read newspaper. It's good to see the updates of the COVID-19. <laughs> it's good to see a new SOP. Maybe it's good. It's important. But you need to bathe yourself in the Word of God. You need to soak yourself with the Word of God. You need to read the Word of God until you feel the Word of God speaks to you every day. Hallelujah. Oh, I, I just finished reading Leviticus 7 round, yeah? I thought I can finish it. Some books, even more than 27 chapters, I finish it quite fast. But Leviticus, now I know somebody said it's true. People, when they read Leviticus, it will take them a long time to finish. And I experienced that. <laughs> I counted how many days I finished book of Leviticus. It took me 63 days to finish Leviticus seven times. Some books quite fast. Three weeks, one month, I can finish seven times. But this book of Leviticus. But it helps me. I understand more now. I can see the division of the book. And I understand what are those divisions, what it is, and what are, what are those written, those divisions. So I, I know my Leviticus now quite better. You need to soak yourself with the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You need to read aloud. The anointing will be activated. But by faith, when you pray for sick people, just pray by faith. Don't worry about the result. Just pray and re believe by faith. When you pray for people, you know, I, I, I pray for many people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we saw that right before our eyes. People are baptized with the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues right there and there immediately. Many of them. And I did it by faith. I don't feel, oh, okay, now, now, now the Holy Spirit is here, ready, ready, oh, I can feel, I can feel. No, I don't say that. I, receive, I release it by faith. And I tell the people, lift your hands, open your mouth, just receive it by faith. And I just pray for them and release. I say, Lord, release it now in Jesus' name. And I tell the people, just receive it now by faith in Jesus' name. I don't have to wait for the feeling. I just have to release it and exercise my faith. And true enough, many of them received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Many of them. They spoke in tongues right immediately. Immediately. Hallelujah. Well, many years ago, I did preach in one of the church in Sabah. And after a few years later on, I went back to the same church and preached again. 
a lady came to me and said, Pastor, you remember me when the first time you came into my our church, you prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I was one of them. I received it when you came the first time. That was my first time to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I spoke with tongues. Wow, what a wonderful testimony. I was so happy. And many of these experiences, many of these incidences happen when we just release by faith. Also, activating the person, the power of the Holy Spirit, is we need to seek for the fresh anointing, fresh touch of the Spirit of God in prayer. So when you pray, pray. I did pray many times in my prayer. I include, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Even this uh, yesterday morning, I said, Lord, fill me. Baptize me again. Fill me again. Lord, increase the anointing. Fill me with a fresh touch of the spirit of God. And I receive it by faith. If you feel any feeling, well, praise God. But if you don't feel anything, just praise God and receive it by faith. Hallelujah. And the last one. How do you activate the person and the power of the Holy Spirit? By walking in it every day. So again, it is a lifestyle. You, ha you have to walk in it every day. Some people, they wait for ministry. Then they say, okay, I walk, we will walk in it. Now, now I release it. I exercise. No, you don't have to wait for ministry. That is your life now. It is your life now. It is your life. You have to grow. I experienced that in the ministry. When I was younger in the ministry, I was fresh in the ministry. Before I worship lead, I must prepare. No. Spend time in prayer. Prepare, Lord. Bless the worship leading. Bless the song, Lord. Oh, I pray. Hallelujah. I receive your high thing. Before going for deliverance, I prepare. Three days fasting, you know, praying. Lord, I prepare before I meet the demon. Before we go mission, yeah, we have to prepare and pray, prepare. Oh, prepare, prepare, prepare and pray. But I, heard, I read one day about Martin Luther. Martin Luther says like this. He who prepares, uh, he who prays well, prepares well. I like that. He who prays well, prepares well. Now in the ministry, yes, I do still prepare, but I don't do it like before. I am living it. That is my preparation. Worship leading, when somebody asks me to worship lead, I don't prepare. I'm living it. So I'm always ready to worship lead. I'm always ready to preach. I'm always ready to minister because I am preparing myself. It's a lifestyle. I'm living in it. I am living in it. People can put me everywhere, anytime, I can stand up there and preach, no problem. Every Sunday I can preach like this, even without preparing, I can preach like this, you know. But I don't want to deprive the church, you know, I, I need to prepare. At least I have written my notes and typed my notes here. I have prepared because maybe one day I need it. I do prepare. I still gather points, outlines, scriptures, you know, I, I prepare my sermons and, you know, put it nicely, I prepare. But I can preach just like that. I can st stand here and preach anytime, no problem. No problem. Many times happen in my traveling ministry. Because in the traveling ministry, sometimes they don't tell you what to preach. So many times I bring my notes, I have all my notes in my iPad. I bring my Bible. But many times when I stand up there, the leading, I see that the Lord is leading me, he said, don't, don't open your notes, don't open your, your, your iPad. Just preach the word, just open your mouth. So when I begin to preach and open my mouth, the word of God just flow like that. But I don't do it all the time, of course. I just do it when I feel the leading, I will do it. But sometimes in ministry like that, you don't know what to preach. So you need to live in there, so that every time you stand up, you will have the word to be preached. So it's a lifestyle to activate the person. You are living with the Holy Spirit, with the person and the power of the Holy Spirit. You are living in it. You live an everyday, everyday life with the Holy Spirit. You need to choose to live like that. And you need to live 
following his steps of course the holy spirit is called the holy spirit because he is the only spirit that is holy so when you move with the holy spirit you will receive the impartation of holiness you will automatically be changed and be transformed and be formed and be molded into holiness holiness talk holiness walk holiness action holiness thought you will have that because you follow it is a lifestyle but the question is are you prepared to live like that are you prepared to have that kind of life are you prepared so this is how you activate the person and the holy spirit and the power of the holy spirit in your life i would encourage you i really pray and hope that in this season of the spirit in this preaching of the Holy Spirit, I pray that there are people that God will touch. I pray that God will visit you with the presence of the Holy Spirit and bring His mighty work in your life. I pray that you will see all this change and transformation takes place in your life as you receive this word of God regarding the Holy Spirit. I pray businesses will be touched by the Spirit. I pray family will be touched by the Holy Spirit. I pray that persons and people will be touched by the Holy Spirit. Husband and wife will be touched with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Children, I pray, will be touched and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Almighty Lord, we give you praise. Give your heart to Jesus. Open your heart to His Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you will visit us in this time. We need the Holy Spirit more than ever. We need, we need His presence. We need His anointing. We need His power. We need the visitation of the Spirit of God, my Father. In Jesus' name, my Father. Lord, we need you. We need your miracle. We need your power. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your glory, Lord, in our churches, in our families, in our homes, in our life, in our businesses. God, we need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, hear us. Holy Spirit, arise. Holy Spirit, descend. Holy Spirit, fill. Baptize us with your power. Holy Spirit, move and work through us. Come to us like a river, like a mighty river in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Lord, and fill our life and fill our churches in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you. I pray that as we cry out to you, as your people pray and cry out to you, I pray, Father, that you will send the Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, through your mercy, through your grace, send the Holy Spirit. God, help us, make us to experience the Holy Spirit like never before. Reveal to us, lead us in Jesus' name. Give us your grace. Give us your grace in these days. Let revival happen again in our day. Let revival happen again in our family. Let revival happen again in every village. Let revival happen again in every city and every nation. In Jesus' mighty name, revival because of the Holy Spirit working mightily in our life. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You teach us your ways. You teach us the way of the Spirit of God. You speak into our life. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We bless you. I pray also that your power, the Spirit of God, the power of the Holy Spirit will touch those people who are infected with COVID-19, those who are admitted in the hospital, those in the dying bed, those, Lord, in the ICU, that the Holy Spirit visit them and touch them. We also pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will destroy the power of COVID-19 and Lord liberate and save the nations in Jesus' name from this virus. We pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will squeeze the life out of COVID-19 and will put an end to this pandemic in the name of Jesus Christ because we believe in you and because we believe in your power. Oh, hallelujah. For the glory of God, for the glory of God, for the glory of God, Amen. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people. Bless your people throughout this week. We love you. We praise you. We give you all the praise. Come on, just give him the glory. Say, we give you the glory, Father. We give you the glory, Lord Jesus. We give you the glory, Holy Spirit. We praise you. 
We exalt your holy name, Lord God, we praise you, and we thank you for your word today. Oh, we praise, we praise, we praise, we praise, we praise Jesus. We thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen, amen. 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 I want to encourage you to share this message to your friends and family, your Facebook, your WhatsApp. I want to encourage you, you know, to pray and to listen to this message again. And pray the Holy Spirit will visit you. Amen. God bless you. And have a great week. Amen.